Hi, this is Susie. Um, I am making a mixed media canvas and I wanted to show you guys how to make a canvas if you don't uh, have a store bought one. And what I have is a piece of cardboard or uh, chipboard and I put double sided tape on one side. and double sided tape around the edges of the back and then I'm going to peel it and put it on a piece of cardstock um, if you didn't want to do this step you could just gesso your chipboard but I wanted to start with a white background so this is how I did it so now I'm just peeling off the tape and I'm going to turn it upside down and stick it to a piece of cardstock and then I'm going to cut the edges and you want to leave make sure that when you cut the corners that you leave about an eighth of an inch of paper on each corner and that way when you fold it in uh, the corners will tuck in and you won't see any of the chipboard and so that's what I'm doing now and again I'm sorry for my froggy voice I have uh, bronchitis or something along that line anyway um, but anyhow, uh, so now I'm just folding it around the edges and taping it down. And before you fold in, you want to do um, opposite sides, fold it, fold it in like I showed here, and then do your other side. But before you fold it in, on these sides you want to tuck your corners in and I'll show you here what I mean by that so you're just going to take your bone folder and kind of push it in on the corners there and that will tuck it in and um, cover all of your chipboard one of my corners I accidentally cut a little bit too short and it showed but um, I'm going to gesso it so it's not going to make any difference. But definitely cut yours a little little bit more than I did on the one side anyways. So now I'm just going to take some, um, this is some uh, heavy weight or um, heavy gesso. And you could use any kind of gesso. It doesn't matter if it's the thick kind or the thin kind. And you want to put a nice thick coating on your paper here and uh, so that's what I'm doing here just making sure it's nice and you know you want to try to put it on so that you don't have too many brush strokes but Honestly, a few here and there really isn't going to make any bit difference with this um, technique that I'm showing you. Okay, so what I'm going to show you here is I, and the reason why it's going to look a little different from the next clip is because when I went to do my editing, I realized that my video had shut off and so I didn't get this part of the video hang on one second sorry about that I had to let my dog in okay so I'm eating up my stamp and I am uh, stamping it uh, without being too particular whether or not the stamp comes out perfect or not and just pretty much just put down some ink all over the board um, you'll notice on the next part of the video that the 
uh, canvas looks a little different. That's because when I went to narrate this, I realized that my video had shut off and so it didn't record me doing this part. So I just uh, wanted to do it again real quick for you guys. And now I am going to use this stencil. And you want to get out your model, or excuse me, your, um, yes, your modeling paste, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, you want to put a good amount on your spatula when you first start. Um, and then just kind of spread it out evenly. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Um, you could also use a, a real heavy gesso if you didn't have modeling paste. That works. Uh, so you want to put a fair amount on your spatula and then just spread it out. Um, be careful not to push too hard. Uh, you don't want to move your stencil or have your modeling paste go too much under it. And then just lift it straight up. And, and then just rinse and repeat. Just make sure that you get it pretty much, you know, all over the canvas. And after this, after you get done doing this step, um, you'll want to let it dry. Uh, I would give it, you know, a good hour and then come back and see if you're Bondly paste is dry before we go on to the next step. <laughs> Sorry, Kenny must be watching something funny. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, also, too, as soon as you get done uh, using your stencils, you want to wash them off thoroughly uh, before you go on. Okay, so now this is after your board is dry. Um, then we're going to do more, um, more stenciling. And I'm going to do that... Uh, corner decoration on the top um, the top left corner and the bottom right corner and then I'm going to do that flower uh, in the center on the opposite corners and same thing just uh, start off with quite a bit of gesso on your on your knife you can always wipe it away but it seems to help have it spread better when you do it that way and I'm just dabbing off my stencil because it had some modeling paste um, up underneath of it and I didn't want to make a mess and now I'm just gonna do the same thing Um, and also what I did with the modeling paste with the corner pieces that I did is I added a little white, uh, acrylic paint to my, or excuse me, to my modeling paste, not my gesso, sorry. Anyway, um, I added a little bit of white acrylic paint to it, um, to make it more opaque. Uh, the... Um, the other stencil that I used, I just used, uh, modeling paste, it didn't add anything to it, and I liked the way it turned out, but it was, um, uh, it was a little bit translucent, so, um, I wanted the corner pieces to stand out a little bit more, and that's why I used the white paint with it. Okay, so at this point 
um, sorry, it had paused and then came back on, um, let your board dry, uh, for an hour or two, make sure that your modeling paste is dry before you start this, this step, and what I'm doing here is I'm using a couple of different Prima sprays, they're the Prima Bloom sprays, And um, you have to shake those up really well. They have a ball in there, and you want to shake it up really good to get the mica powder mixed in good. Uh, so now I'm just giving it a good spray. Um, you'll notice that my black ran um, at first when I was making this. I thought, oh my goodness, oh no. <laughs> But I really end up liking the effect that it gave, so I just I just kept going with it, you know, and uh, just blotted off the extra black that was running because I didn't want to muddy up my my colors. But it really did give a very cool effect, uh, and I end up really liking it. So. You know, I mean, if you don't want your black to run at all, um, I suggest using a stays on ink. Um, if you like the way this turned out, then use um, a non water, you know, or a water based ink or um, something that's not waterproof, rather. Um, this ink that I used is the homemade ink that I made on my, I uh, have a video about it on my channel, and it works awesome with, um, alcohol markers, and that's why I thought that it would probably be okay and not run, but I was mistaken, <laughs> but anyways, uh, like I said, I ended up really liking it anyway, so, you know, it, it all worked out. <laughs> And this is a new color here, too, so I'm just giving it a good shake. <clears throat> and again, I'm super sorry about my froggy voice. I'm starting to wonder if it's going to ever go back to normal. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I'm just spraying on that color. Yeah, And now I'm going to use these uh, color, or excuse me, paint powders. And I love these. They are amazing. <laughs> uh, so you really, really, really want to go light. And I mean like hardly any paint powder on there at first and work up with your colors. Um, because a little tiny bit of this goes a very long way. Um, this uh, tutorial is going to be in two parts. Um, I didn't want it to go very, you know, too long and whatnot, so I'm going to put it in two parts. So I hope you guys watch part two. And I am building up the colors slowly on here, um, adding a little tiny bit at a time, and uh, and just like I said, just working up with my colors and kind of uh, letting it settle into um, a little bit before I start in with the next coloring. Uh, color powder and spray and also too what I'm doing is I'm putting my lighter colors uh, at the top and the darker colors towards the bottom and then letting them meet in the middle and here you'll see the magic of that powder it doesn't look like there's hard doesn't look like there's anything on there and 
uh, the more you spray it the more they pop and um, I did start really slowly and just kind of kept dabbing off the extra water because I didn't like I said I didn't want to have my colors get all muddied up and I really did like the way the black um, made it look it turned out really awesome I just love it Add in some more color, putting some more blue towards the top. I love this product, and I uh, you could do so much with one of these packages of them because you don't use hardly any of it and it looks like when you get it like holy cow there's not very much in here but for the little bit that you need it will last a long time it'll make many 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 projects Adding in some more purple. And here I'm going to kind of strategi strategically place some of the purple paint here and there. And then giving it another good spray. And then some more of the blue, it looks like. And um, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Um, after uh, you guys get done doing this part, you want to set it aside and let it dry overnight uh, before we continue on to the next part. And I uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys stay tuned for part two. And we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys.